So this is the rebuilt Bushmaster. So if you didn't watch the first video, Wyndham Main built Bushmaster. And since Bushmaster came back as a company, I wanted to rebuild this thing. Tons of good stuff on this. Came out, just do a couple uh, transition bursts with this thing here. I would say it's functioning pretty well right now. So we're gonna go ahead and just get into the video. Well, sometimes you have just got to rebuild the, the old ones. Your first ones, or those ones that you've had around for a long time because there's some nostalgia there and you just really want to keep those things around. So this is the first rifle I ever bought, like I said. This is like very end of 2006 or very early of 2007, right around that time frame when it was manufactured. And back at that point, this thing was outfitted fairly well for what we had available at that time. You gotta remember, all this crazy, really crazy cool stuff just wasn't available back then that started to really come about in like 2008, 2010, 2012. So looking at that thing then, you would've thought it was cool, but looking at it in the modern era, it was tired and outdated to say the least. And combine that with the fact that this used to be a work setup for me, so it had a lot of rounds through it. The groups were opening up, the barrel was worn, the bolt was given out on this thing. The bolt wasn't even properly staked from back then in the day. And quite honestly, it was literally the loosest fitting receiver set that I have ever seen or owned in my entire life. However, even with those problems, it was very accurate. It lasted a long time, but I wanted to give it some love and bring the joy back into it. And I gotta say, after this rebuild, I am super happy with it again although there are a couple of things maybe a few things that i might have done differently because some of this stuff were just parts i had laying around but before we get into everything that went into this new rebuild rifle a shout from the sponsor of today's video hrt tactical sponsor of today's video longtime supporter of the channel here they make hard use carriers and kit whether you are using this stuff for work or train from modular plate carriers to simplified harnesses to grab on the go and use out there fit your needs for whatever mission specific stuff you are looking for hrttactical.com well let's go ahead and take a good up close look at all of the parts that went into this rebuild and then check out that range footage talk about the performance with all of this new stuff combined and then a couple of those changes or a few of those changes that i might still want to do in the future all right, here we are up close. We're going to kind of talk about this rebuild, the parts from buttstock to business in here, even though I already have it broken down. So this is, these are things you would replace and clean during regular maintenance. So when your parts were out, these are the items you'd want to replace them with. So coming to the business end or the back end right here, I mean, we have the Magpul CTR stock. Um, there was no reason to change it. It's a commercial tube on this one because that's the way it was built from Bushmaster. And I figured rather than buy a whole new tube and a new stock, I would just leave this on here and use it. In the back there, you can see that is the old school Knight's Armament uh, QD mount right there. You can see how thick that thing is. Worked well, did its job. Up in the guts right there, we're using a standard carbine buffer, standard carbine spring, and then you'll see that little red kind of polymer looking rubberized part right there. So that's one of those like receiver set kind of tensioners. It's rubberized, it just sits in there and gives it a little bit of a nicer feel. So it doesn't feel all sloppy loose because this was probably the loosest receiver set that I've ever felt. As far as the small parts go, I used that Armaspec kit. It's got a 4590 uh, Ambi safety on it right there. Stubby on the offside. Very nice, comes with all the lower parts kit except for your grip and your chosen fire control unit. You'll get some anti-walk pins. Of course, your uh, bolt lock, your magazine release is a little bit of an extended one. You can kind of see right there. And then, you know, your pins, uh, very nice pins, very nice machine work. All of the detents are stainless steel, good stainless steel springs in there. And it's made in the USA, so a solid kit. Get that BCM gunfighter grip, love those. They are great, a lot of people enjoy those. Got the uh, Magpul trigger guard right there, a little bit of an extended one. So if you've got the big hot dog fingers or you're using gloves. And then the big splurge on this one was the big G on the trigger. So that Geisley single stage trigger and let's go ahead and pull on a little bit if you want to see that and if you answered that question too fast think about how i asked it so you'll see right here you got a little bit of mil spec style take up and then we'll have a minimal amount of creep and a break here's your reset so not bad we'll go ahead and do a couple pulls here so you guys can get a good idea of what this is going to pull out for you it's fairly light so that was a little low on the trigger right there, but that came in at about two and a half pounds. 
So I'm going to pull a little higher this time, kind of right in the middle. This will also prove a point that where you place your finger gives you a better pull. That's going to be right around three pounds. And I'll pull even higher this time, say way up here. All right. And then that one pulled all the way up to four pounds. So ultimately the goal, get low like they say in today's music and pull as low as you can. And you're going to get a sub two pound or a two and a half pound trigger pull on it. So all good stuff there. Happy with how that came out for sure. When it comes to the upper receiver here, some of the small parts, I've got that blackout striker charging handle. Loving what blackout's doing. They're coming out with really good stuff because they want to control everything in house for their custom rifles. I think I got coupon codes for all that blackout stuff too, should you be interested. So I had this chrome bolt laying around. This is a, this is an oldie. It was sitting in a box and I forgot I had it. I think this one is by Young Manufacturing. I'm pretty sure they're still local to Arizona. It's all right, it's not bad. It has serviced me well. I've used their bolts before. It's got some pretty hideous machine work. I know it's, it's gonna be really tough to see up in there. I'll try to get you the best light possible, but the machine work down in there is, it's, it's god awful. So externally it's great, but inside the valley it's, it's pretty gnarly, but properly staked right there. Everything you should be looking for. And I've never had one of their bolts fail. So that's, that's always a good sign, right? Uh, might go with something different these days. All right, for that rail up in here, that BCM 15 MCMR, this is, this is just a great rail. Everything from how it narrows out towards the upper receiver, from how this thing attaches up here to that anti-rotation tab around there. This rail has been well-proven, M-lock all the way around it. You got plenty to work with here. Very nice kind of design towards the end right here. So you can run your suppressors, run whatever you want. If it's a little bit of a deeper throated suppressor, you're not gonna have a problem hitting your uh, rail right there. And it's gonna do everything you need to do with this. Hands down, one of my favorite rails. Uh, finish this off with a little bit of an improved muzzle device. That was actually the Daniel Defense one that came off my uh, DDM4 V7. It was laying in a box out there. So I threw it in this build, figured why not? Why buy something else? Now in here, you can see that is the blackout defense barrel right there. That's a 16 inch uh, barrel in here. So very good stuff. Uh, one and eight twist, four sixteen are solid barrels and they've got some really cool stuff coming out and they design these barrels a little bit different and they gas port them appropriately. So you don't have to be worried about being super gassy out there. Now up inside there, a little tough to see. You will see that as an arrow precision adjustable gas block right there. You can just barely make out right there on the front, kind of through that port. You'll see the uh, adjustment on there. I know, real tough to see, right? <laughs> kind of trying to show you this here, but you'll see it. Uh, you'll see it up in there. So stainless steel gas tube, but that arrow adjustable gas block, absolutely great stuff. Worth every single penny to go to an adjustable. As far as the rest of that upper receiver, got those Midwest Industries battle sites. Uh, they are flip ups. There is no locking detent. So they flip up, they flip down. That's going to be both the front and the rear. Honestly, they're nice. They're low profile. Those sites are going to do absolutely everything you're going to need backup sites to do. And on there, we've got a golden oldie in the way of that aim point. Again, something I had and I wasn't going to get rid of, but take a good look right there. A comp C3 to MOA. <laughs> So if you don't know, that's about a 13 to 15 year old aim point right there. And this thing is still going strong. Wouldn't give it up for the world. Love it. It's absolutely a tank. I did already change over to the ADM mount. So you might've seen earlier that it had that uh, arrow precision mount on there. I like the ADM stuff better. It's a quick release. It's a little bit taller on the overall profile American made. Good stuff. And that was, I guess, kind of the secondary splurge. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Coming forward, you'll see I have that uh, Streamlight RM9. I had that laying around and that is on a nice little M-Lock pressure pad mount from a company called Schaefer Machines. So you can see how tight that is. And then just that piece of BCM rail in there. So that's what it's hooked on. And that piece of pick rail does come with the BCM rail. And then on the off side here, you'll see I have that uh, BCM rail attachment for the QD point, And that does come with a rail as well. So absolutely awesome. And then out front here, I've got those factor stops right there. If you guys have never seen those before, 
you got a hand stop and a barricade stop up there and you can buy them as a kit or you can buy them separate but they're just absolutely great because they really you can size them to your hand perfectly they are polymer m lock just good stuff i love everything that factors do and i think i have a i think i got something for them too i'll put it all at the build list for you well that's a good look at all the parts on this thing let's talk about the range footage on this and have i fallen back in love with it well how about seeing this thing on the range and talking about how it feels I have to say it feels just 100% better. Everything from the tightness of the receiver set now, that rail out front, that, that trigger. The recoil on it is definitely more consistent and quite a bit lighter than what it was. And I'm just running that carbine buffer in here, but I've got that adjustable arrow gas block in there. So I've pretty much transitioned or I'm starting to transition to pretty much all of my rifles going forward and redoing some others with an adjustable gas block, whether it's an Arrow or another brand. I know people have their own favorites and heavy buffers, heavy springs. You just tune that block in a little bit and you're good to go. Five rounds, um, you have it all the way open. Maybe you go four or five clicks in and then if it's too much, you just start to back it out, give it a little bit more gas. And what you're looking for is just for that thing to cycle around and then lock back on an empty magazine. One more up to give it a little extra gas if you want. That way, if it's really dirty, it's gonna cycle but it's a super simple and super fast process. Very, very good detent in there that lets you know when you've made your adjustment and you just have a ton of fun out there with it. And I gotta say it cycled 100% and it cycled exactly where you want that ejection pattern and it feels way better than it used to. Now, all of those small parts from like the safety selector, that Armaspec kit, I've used it several times now. It's turned out just to be great. Everything is super smooth with that. The blackout defense stuff, I love those charging handles and their other parts there. I think I've still got a coupon code for them. I'll link it at the build list for you. All that small stuff turned out just great. They operate smooth. They operate exactly as how I'd want. And I didn't have any problems with putting any of that stuff on the set. And the cool thing about that Armaspec kit is it's everything minus your grip and your lower fire control unit. So you get to pick those and it's a USA made parts kit. And of course the Aimpoint C3 on that arrow mount right there. So. That is an old aim point. So it wasn't even like the M version, right? This is the C. So this is like the, like the modern version of the pro like 15 years ago. <laughs> so, but these things last and there's no reason to change that out or say the stock or any of that stuff. If it's still going to function and do everything you need it to, you can modernize it, but why give up on a good old aim point that we know is just so proven to buy a new one. I do have to say the real treat on this thing is that Geisley trigger. So anytime you see the G on a trigger, people love them. I've not always been a fan, not gonna lie to you. I do not like two-stage triggers. I do not like the Geisley two-stage triggers, but I wanted to give this SSP, the single-stage trigger, a shot, and I am glad I did. I think many of you know, I'm probably gonna be using a Blackout Zero because that is the fastest trigger me and several other people have ever tried. But this is a mil-spec ish style trigger that I like. I love it. And I would definitely have no problem buying this one again if I'm looking for a total parts mil-spec style trigger, not a straight drop-in. And there are reasons to choose a mil-spec style trigger over, say, a drop-in trigger. It could be policies of where you work, or maybe you're just not comfortable with those, or just that all personal choice to go with Big G because Geisley's well known. They've got great stuff, and I think people love it and they're willing to pay the sometimes well over 220, 30, 40, or 50 bucks for whatever trigger you're deciding to go with. So yes, I am happy with it, but there are still a few things that I would probably change on this. And one of those is gonna be that arrow precision mount. Now, not a bad mount at all. I like it. I have used it for a while and on things before, but I just got this one in right here from ADM and I just like the ADM mount. So we'll go ahead and check this out real quick. If you haven't never seen one of these, ADM makes some of the best mounts out there, at least in my opinion. It is a quick release mount, so goes on super easy. Still a cantilever style design in that lower one third. I do really like the taller, like the o, the 193 style stuff. Uh, if you've ever had neck problems or say you're using night vision through passive aiming, the taller the mount is gonna be a little bit better for you. It's a little bit more comfortable, but you gotta remember more mechanical offset and at distances it's gonna change where your impact and all that stuff is gonna be based on your standard zero. And then your sights are obviously gonna be quite a bit different. If you got that tall, tall uh, mount on there, you're probably not gonna be able to use regular irons unless you actually take the mount and the optic off, should the optic fail. And the second thing I would change would 
would be that muzzle device. And like I said, some of this were just parts that I had laying around, had thrown in kind of the spare parts been out there. And that actually came off the Daniel Defense. Uh, I do believe my DDM4 V7. Um, if I was gonna have to buy a new one, I would say I'd buy like the VG6 Delta, something like that. It's still short. It does a great job at helping keep that muzzle down on rapid firing. Um, it's a little angry to people on the left and right. I think we all know that anytime you put a massive break on the end of your barrel, your buddies to the left and right, or specifically your camera guy, is really not gonna like you. And the third thing I would change would probably be that light. Now, I do love the way that this thing is set up with that Schaefer machining mount on there. Um, the new version of that M-Lock mount that they have actually routes the wire underneath it, so it is super clean and it's really affordable. I'm gonna say like 30 bucks, that's not bad at all. And then you put your light on like a little Arasaka inline so it's tucked up in there nice and tight, nice and smooth and clean, less snag going on. But if I were gonna buy, you know, a light for this, not that this one is bad at all, and this is a light some people really like out there, I'd go with that Protec HLX. It's a flamethrower, I've got a ton of experience with it. It is the best overall bang for the buck when it comes to weapon mounted lights. You throw on a pressure pad holder like that one, alleviates the plastic stuff that they come with. And hands down, it's gonna do everything you need it to do. I've seen the Streamlight Protac lights take everything from motorcycle accidents. Yes, there are rifles on the backs of motorcycles sometimes. Um, I've seen them get dropped, I've seen them get thrown. I've used one for years that's the same one and it's never had a problem. So they're just a great value for what you're getting. Like 120, 130, sometimes 150 bucks, I guess, depending on the price of the day with everything going on but it's a lot cheaper by half or a third than some of the Surefire, uh, Mod Light, Cloud, you know, all that different stuff that I have too. It's still just one of the best values. And the absolute last thing I might change is that bolt. So yeah, it's a chrome bolt that's super easy to clean. That old young manufacturing one, the machine work isn't the best on it. It runs, I've run those before and I've put a lot of rounds through them. But if I were to buy a brand new one, I would probably get an Arrow or a Ballistic Advantage or a Blackout. Um, heck, even a PSA like, you know, Nickel Boron one or a Fail Zero because I think the PSA ones are actually Toolcraft now, which is a well-known bolt that's gonna give you plenty of love in life. So that would probably be the last thing that I might go a different direction on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my first honey. And I'm glad I rebuilt it because I'm gonna keep this thing forever. This is not going anywhere. It's not gonna be a work setup or a hard running setup. This is just one that I wanna keep around because it's got that nostalgia. It was the first one I had and why? You know, why get rid of it if you don't have to, right? So if you are interested in anything you saw on this build here today, that'll be over at my blog post. You can follow that link in the description to my website. You can check all that stuff out. I have some discount codes, like I said, for blackout and I think a couple of the other items on here or most of it, depending on where you can actually find the stuff in stock, because it seems to be accessories are hot right now. Everyone's buying stuff to outfit and they're you know, out of stock a lot. But should you choose to, I'll leave those links down there for you and you can give your haggard old girl some love and bring her into the modern era like I did. Well, that is the end of it. So you go ahead, get out on the range and have some fun with your rebuilt honey, even if it was your first one. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready and I will see you on the next one.